from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live US 2019. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Good morning from sunny San Diego, Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. This is day three of theCUBE's coverage of Cisco Live. You can hear all of the buzz behind us. Day three is just as jammed as days one and two. We're pleased to welcome, for the first time, a couple of guests. We've got Muninder Sambi, VP of Product Management, Routing and SD-RAN and Switching, and Neil Anderson, Practice Director, Network Solutions, WWT to my right. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. Thank you. So before we went live, Neil and Munin, and we were talking about the 20-year relationship, Cisco, WWT, each other's largest partners. As we look at the transformation that Cisco has undergone and all of the transformation of the network, there's so many expectations with 5G, with Wi-Fi 6, speed, et cetera, but security. Talk to us about how the relationship has evolved and what you guys are doing together with SD-WAN. Yeah, I think, you know, um, we've definitely had a consultative relationship where we've, we saw the SD-WAN market emerging pretty early, for example, and we, you know, immediately talked with our Cisco counterparts, with Meninder and his team about what are the things we're seeing developing in our customer base and how do their products need to evolve to adapt to that. And so I think it's been a really good relationship. And actually, I mean, it's 20 years of relationship, but we have known Neil for a very long time. <laughs> um, and I think, the SD-WAN market is evolving so fast with cloud applications, with applications moving to the cloud, with workloads that are changing, customers expecting a very different branch experience. And Office 365 is an example that is leading that experience. So much of the innovation that we have done so far has been towards the branch. We have enhanced like multi-layered security, we have enhanced application quality of experience. But recently what we've also announced is the ability to extend SD-WAN beyond the branch. So we just announced the secure cloud scale SD-WAN where you can now take the same orchestration platform, the same policy that you define. You can extend it from the branch all the way into your co-location into the cloud. And this architecture that we talked about could not have been done without the partnership with WWT. Yeah, that's absolutely what we're seeing in our customer base. As, as customers are adopting the public cloud more, adopting SaaS applications more in the cloud, there's a real need to extend the WAN fabric out to the cloud, and that's, historically, it's been more of a branch to branch, branch to headquarters technology, but we're really seeing it as now branch to cloud is becoming almost the, the, the core part of the conversation for SD-WAN now. Yeah, yeah, Neil, wondered if you could expand on that a little bit for us. Uh, give us that customer viewpoint because, you know, for a bunch of years it was like, well, okay, we're SD-fying everything out there. What does that really mean? WAN's always been a complicated space, uh, and it, it, you know, what I've heard for the last couple of years is SD-WAN's been one of the critical components of customers when they do multi-cloud, but what I've heard a lot this week is it's more than just some of that networking piece. There's a lot of security aspects of it and uh, th th there's a lot of nuance and uh, uh, other features that are coming into the SD-WAN portfolio. Yeah, and, and that's absolutely what we're seeing is customers are, you know, they need to find that comfort level. I need to extend my connectivity out to the cloud, but how do I do that in a secure way? And SD-WAN makes it just very, very easy to do that, where as before it was, it was tougher to manage. Uh, but with SD-WAN, and especially with the Cisco vManage portfolio, being able to manage my security out there as well as the SD-WAN connectivity, it just makes it easier for customers to, to finally extend their fabric out to the cloud. And, and we've also given choices. Um, traditionally, people would have, customers would have implemented security and WAN. Uh, they come together in the branch but many customers are looking at regional hubs. You know, regional hubs where they can now have best in breed the SD-WAN stack with security, stitch it with other L4, L7 services. And we can offer this as a cookie cutter pod type approach that they can buy, or they can actually go and get it procured it from WWT. So walk us through, uh, Muninder, we'll start with you. For customers that have really nailed the branch from a networking perspective, but now you're offering this capability of beyond the branch, what is that network transformation extension process like for customers to go through? What does, sorry I didn't hear the end I'm oh, sorry, it's loud in here. What is that process for a customer who's got phenomenal networking within their branch, to now work with Cisco and WWT to go beyond the branch. What's that upgrade process like? Upgrade process. So, 
the first process would be obviously getting with our partners, with our uh, other managed services partners, getting your SD WAN infrastructure in the branch, deploying multi-layer security, up, uh, applying application quality of experience. As they look at more and more cloud connectivity, they look at applications and workloads going to the cloud, they've started to create these uh, regional hubs or colos. And they want to be able to centralize many of the branch security capabilities in that place and be able to do L4, L7 stitching. And for that, that capability that we, we are announcing is some what we call internally is cloud on-ramp for co-location. We also have cloud on-ramp for infrastructure as a service, which means you can extend that same, same technology, same solution into the multi-cloud environment. Is the on-ramp a set of services, consulting services, or an actual product suite that customers can use It is to actually deploy? a product suite that they can consume directly from Cisco, or they can partner with WWT to consume it as a service. And the nice part about those, the capabilities that Manin is talking about is that it's, it's, it's built into the vManage platform, so it's another, it's a, to the customer it looks like another SD-WAN node out there, it looks like another branch, essentially through vManage. Makes it super easy for customers to figure that out because it is new to them, this concept yes. of regional colo hubs is very new, a little bit of a different skill set required to understand and how to architect that, but the, what, what, we're, what we're looking at is with the vManage platform and the, and the capabilities they've put in with Cloud on Ramp, it's just going to make it a very natural way for customers to turn that on and consume it that way because they're already familiar with vManage and SD-WAN. So we think it's actually a brilliant move and it's going to simplify things for our customer base. It's a fully automated stack that's multi-tenant. So for Neil, he can offer it not just to one customer, he can offer the same infrastructure to multiple customers yeah, while absolutely. providing security. Yeah, absolutely. If customers are not comfortable with that concept, we can manage it for them and offer it as a managed service as well. Yeah, so Neil, you, you've got so, some long history with, with Cisco uh, and you've, we've talked about simplicity a little bit. Can you walk through a little bit about kind of the, the role of a partner like WWT today and maybe versus what it might have been five or 10 years ago? Yeah, I would say it's, uh, it's definitely evolving, right? I mean, I think in the past, we were a little bit more on the fulfillment side, right? We would come in and help the customer. They, they kind of knew what they wanted to purchase. We would help them figure out how they're going to deploy that across their 3,000 branch sites, and we were very, very good at that. I think where it's evolved to today is that we're doing a lot more of that upfront consulting and design architecture work uh, alongside our partner Cisco to, to, to help customers figure out what, what does that next generation WAN need to look like from the start. And that's, that's, a, that's a new aspect of our business is really that upfront consulting and designing of yeah. the network itself. Yeah, I mean, if I could, <clears throat> say, I, I think before it was, a lot of it was, you know, boxes. How many ports and what do I need? And therefore, you needed to do more of the configuration when it got there and rack it and stack it and do all that as opposed to today. There's so many choices out there. Once we've chosen it and architected it, you've pre-built it, the rollout's a little bit easier than it might have been in the past. Is, is that a fair Absolutely. statement? Absolutely, and that's yeah. where really our, our services are shifting from yeah. that downstream service to more of that upfront service. The other thing we're doing is by being able to consume the APIs from the platform, we can add new things on there that are specific to that customer that maybe aren't out of the box from Cisco. A more software-led sales motion as well. Absolutely. And, and, and this has been a journey that. for all of us. I think we've also evolved, uh, transformed as a company, uh, much more towards a SDX stack, both on the campus, uh, on the branch, and the data center. And I mean, having partners with Neil, I mean, we were very used to, here's a new innovation, and WWT, let's go position this with our customers. It's now it's more about what does the customer want to achieve? It's tying it back to their application workload. It's tying it back to their cloud first strategy understanding that and up-leveling on how software can enable it. That's a big learning for all of us. Yeah, and, no, and it doesn't go, it goes with co-development. Mm -hmm. We have to co-develop together because the, the number of customers that Neil has access to, we get tons and tons of use cases and new information from it and we develop on top of those. Yeah, and that's what I would say, Menindra, is you used to deliver products, now you're actually delivering a platform that partners like us can take that platform actually layer software on top of it if it's needed to, to deliver what the customer's really looking for for their outcome. Yeah, so Neil, uh, when I look at the SD-WAN space, there's still, it's not one market, there's a bunch of different pieces out there. Why Cisco for SD-WAN? What, what's kind of the killer use case for them and what differentiates them in the marketplace? Well, that's interesting. So we, we had a relationship with the Viptela team prior to Cisco's acquisition. We, we felt very early that they had 
a lead on the market and they were going to do some very disruptive things and, and we were very happy when Cisco acquired them and, and, as, and the speed with which Cisco's integrated them into the portfolio is actually pretty amazing. <clears throat> um, but what we, see, what we saw in them was they were, they were accomplishing a lot of things, right? They were able to have this balance of being able to support the deep routing features that our big customers were looking for, but at the same time making that simpler to turn on and consume with the vManage platform. So we had picked them pretty early as a, as a big player in the market and we're really happy that you know, Cisco's integrated them into the portfolio because it's made it even better. Cisco's doing things with them that they could, they could have never done on, them, on their own. Well, we'll be excited to see how the Beyond the Branch manifests with WWT and Cisco. Gentlemen, thank you for joining Stu and me on theCUBE this morning on day three. Absolutely, thank you very thank much. You. Oh, our pleasure. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from San Diego, Cisco Live, day three. We'll be right back.